Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another record to play for you. Today's record is the Fortunate Family Mom. So let's get started. The Fortunate Fatima. Once long ago, there lived in the city of Ishpahan a girl named Fatima. She was the daughter of a wealthy spinner of flax and wool. One day, her father came to her with exciting news. Come, my dear daughter. I have exciting news. We're going on a journey, for I have urgent business in the Isles of the Middle Sea. And there, perhaps, we may find you a handsome young man with much gold whom you could take as a husband. They started off immediately and sailed from island to island, the father trading with other businessmen while Fatima dreamt and wondered about the husband she would have. One day, however, they were on their way to Rhodes when a storm rolled over their small ship and the ship was wrecked. Dazed and exhausted, Fatima was thrown up onto the shore. Her father was dead, and she was without one penny. During the shipwreck and her time in the water, she had lost part of her memory and could only dimly remember her life as it had been before. While she was wandering on the beach, wondering where she was, a family of cloth makers saw her and brought her into their humble home. Although they were poor and had little to share, they fed her and taught her their craft. In less than a year, Fatima could make cloth as well as anyone in the land, and so she slowly made a second life for herself and in time was happy with her lot and thought no more of when she was the daughter of a rich man in Ishpahan. But one day, when she was wandering on the seashore collecting shells, a band of slave traders landed suddenly and captured her, carrying her away with several other unfortunate people who had been wandering nearby. And then Fatima wept bitterly and wondered at her fate. But the slave traders didn't care how she felt and told her to shut up or else. They said they were taking her to Istanbul to be sold as a slave, and they were sure that she would fetch a fine price. Before she knew it, she was standing with the other slaves in front of a small crowd of people who were buyers. One of them was an old man who was looking for slaves to work in his lumber yard, where he made the masts for ships. When he saw how sad Fatima looked, he decided at once to buy her thinking that, in this way at least, he might be able to give her an easier time than if she were bought by another master. So he brought Fatima to his home, intending to make her a serving maid for himself and his wife. This would be a simple job for her to do, and one that required little physical labor. But when the old man arrived home, he learned that he had lost all his money in a cargo which had been taken by pirates. He could no longer afford to hire workers in his lumber yard, so he, Fatima, and his wife had to work day and night at the hard labor of making ship masts. Fatima was grateful to the old man for rescuing her from the slave traders, and she worked so hard and so well that he gave her her freedom, which made her very happy. Soon she was helping him run the lumber yard, and before long he was making a lot of money again. For, like her father before her, Fatima was a very good business person. One day the old man heard that in the port of Java there had been a terrible typhoon and now half the ships there needed new masts before they could be sailed. He couldn't wait to tell Fatima. Fatima, have you heard the news about Java? Why, we should be able to sell half our stock there. Will you go for me as, as my agent? For in truth, you can sell masts at a better profit than I can. Fatima told the old man she would gladly go, and the next day she sailed with a hundred masts stored in the ship's hold below. But when the ship was close by the coast of China, a hurricane came from out of nowhere and wrecked it. Fatima woke up to find herself once more lying upon a seashore in a foreign land without a penny in her pocket. Once again, she wept and wondered why such things happened to her. Oh, why am I so unlucky? I harm no one. I'm honest, and I've been told I'm kind. Yet, just as events seem to be going right for me, everything goes wrong, and I must start all over again. Oh, why should bad things happen to me? But she knew there would be no answer, so she got up from the sand and slowly walked away from the sea, 
knowing that soon she would meet the people of the land and hoping that they would be kind. Of course, nobody in China knew about Fatima or her troubles, but it happened that there was an important legend that a stranger, a woman, would one day come to this land and that she would be able to make a fine tent for the emperor. At this time in history, there was no person in China who knew how to make tents, and so everyone was quite anxious and curious that this legend would come true. As a matter of fact, the emperor of China himself was so eager to have a tent that he sent men to all the towns and villages throughout the land, asking that any foreign woman should be brought forward and returned with them to the emperor's court. When Fatima walked into a nearby town, filthy with sand and the foam of the sea, one of the emperor's men saw her and spoke to her through an interpreter, explaining that she must go to visit the emperor. When Fatima came before him, the emperor was very happy to see her because he liked entertaining foreign visitors, but he didn't think she could make a tent. No one had been able to before. Still, there was that legend, and it had to come true sometime, so he asked what he always asked. Madam, from a foreign land, I hate to ask, but can you, uh, can you make a tent? A tent? I think so. Then she asked for rope, but there was none. But that didn't much bother her, because she remembered her father, the spinner of flax, and what he had taught her. And so she asked for some flax and made ropes. Next, she asked for some strong cloth. But although they offered her fine silks, the Chinese hadn't the kind she wanted. But that didn't bother her either, because she remembered what she had learned from the cloth makers, and she made some strong tent cloth. Then she realized that she needed tent poles, but the Chinese had never heard of such a thing. But this didn't bother her at all, because she remembered what the old lumberman had taught her and was able to carve her own tent poles. Then she sat back for a few minutes and thought about all the tents she had seen during her travels in many lands, and she remembered exactly how they were made. So she made one and presented it to the emperor. Well, the emperor was beside himself with joy. Now I will be remembered forever, because a legend has come true during my reign, and all because of this splendid woman. Madam, make any wish and if it is in my power, I will grant it, for you have brought me immortality. Fatima asked to be allowed to live in China, which the emperor immediately granted. Because she asked for nothing else, the emperor took it upon himself to give her more, and built her a fine house, and he gave her jewels and gold, which she would give away to the poor. When the emperor's youngest son returned from school, he fell in love with Fatima and she with him, and so they were married. Fatima remained happy all the rest of her days, surrounded by her loving husband and her children. So that was the fortunate family mom. So please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. And we'll have another video coming out real soon.